All right, boys and girls, we're back. I'm Chris13. You are viewers. You're watching this. You know what's going on. We're beating up dragons. We're finding moogles. We're getting treasure. We're leveling. You know, doing stuff like that. Well, you know, I guess I could have ended the last episode at the save point, but too bad. It's not even like I'm going to use it. Look at that. Running right on past. Because, you know, Honey Celeste don't care. She just don't give a fuck. And hey, I remember you. You got in our way once or twice before. And you think you're gonna get in our way again? I don't think so. Alright, this boss, just like the other ones, not too difficult. He's actually weak to fire, but I'm not gonna hit him with fire quite yet because he counters to it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by hitting him with all my strongest magic, well, strongest abilities. Actually, you'll see what he does when you cast fire on him. It's nothing really all too worrisome. Plus, you should probably end up killing him, honestly. But, wait. Oh, you absorb Pearl! You jerk! But yeah, you hit him with fire, and he just continues doing what he's been doing the whole time, which is counter with rasp. Because, well, he's a jerk. Clearly. So we'll just have Mog use... Well, I guess this Mog doesn't even have to use fire. Look at that. Sabin, you know, killed him. All on his own. Just Sabin. He's too powerful. Too powerful. Oh, and he learned death, because, you know, he totally needs a one-hit kill move when he doesn't kill everything in one hit anyways. So, you are the humans who freed me from my icy entrapment. You have Magirocks. Do you seek to make me one? I suppose I have no choice. Why must this world be filled with such bloodlust? Has the Great Demon War continued for a thousand years, then? Ah, I see. So you're fighting back. I shall just have to help put an end to this, then. Now, I shall test your resolve. Um, dude? You already tested our resolve. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You'd think that, uh... He'd say that before he fights you. Huh. Oh well, whatever. With that, we get... I don't even know what that says. We get Tritoch. Because, whoo, he teaches you three elemental magics. Faraga, Blizzaga, and Thundaga. Which, at a times one, is not that great. There are going to be other espers that teach it to you faster. But kind of like Medine that teaches you the three at the times three, it doesn't hurt to start learning them if you've got nothing better for your characters to do. Because... They get pretty powerful when you start, you know, hitting with level 3 fire spells. And if you just give me a moment, I'm going to go back and use a tent, because I'm kind of low on MP. Alright, and we're back. Now you noticed... When we beat Tritoch, or Villagaramontizuli... Blah, whatever his name was... He opened up this new path for us. So, of course we're gonna jump down. Video, video game logic dictates we must. For if we did not, how would we be able to proceed? How would we be able to get through? Oh, you bastard. Uh, you're probably gonna die before I have a chance to undo this, but whatever, I'll give it a shot. Look at that, I'm still trying to pick it on myself. And I'm already... Urgh. Jerk. Ah. Oh, well, looks like we're gonna have to worry about that coming through here. Whoa, hole.
Yeah, that's right. The trick to this dungeon? Holes. All over the place. Gotta watch your step. Really? Really, guys? Ugh. I don't want to have to give everyone ribbons. I really don't. Damn it. Okay, you know what? I think I am just going to give everyone ribbons because... Otherwise, this is just going to get a bit too annoying. Hey, what do you mean, a Candasuna? Fine, I'll do that. Accessory... Why do you have a... Fine, fine. Prince Kappa and Silence. Ooh, it does increase my defense. Alright, fine. You know what? I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equipment must be changed. Goodbye, earring. A little white cape. Ah, you can't take one. It's okay. You can still attack when you're kappa -ed. And so can you, so that doesn't matter. Only those two need it. Anyways, as I was saying... The, uh, trick to this dungeon? All those holes. Also, tonberries. Yeah, really, really powerful. What we're gonna want to do... Oh crap, you don't know Vanish yet. Okay. Do you know Vanish? Damn it. We're one down. Where is it? No, you don't? Crap. Okay, magic. Vanish. Self. Magic. Cura him before we lose it. Uh, yeah. Step count? Does damage equal to the amount of steps you've taken divided by something? Also known as lots of damage. You bastard, I hate those guys. I hate them so much. Alright. Time to revive everybody. Seriously, how is she the only one who knows Vanish, though? I could have sworn more people knew it. Oh, you're working on it. Wait. Damn it! Oh, if only I'd known you had Phantom. Okay, whatever. Now I know. You can cure everyone up. And unfortunately, there goes my Phantom status, even outside of battle. Whee! Hole. Yeah, that was kind of stupid. Oh well. Um. There is actually a treasure chest in here somewhere. With a uh, treasure box monster that I actually want to find. Though I can't quite remember where it is. Crap. You know what? We're going to make do make this really easy on ourselves. And da 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 da. Moral's charm. The Moogle charm. Da, 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 da. Now we can just run through here however we want. You can see where all the ho oh there's a the treasure chest. Eh, one of those two is. Anyways, this door leads back to here. That other door leads to the other side. You noticed we fell. Um. Okay, let's remove Moral's charm. Where's my flying dragon? There we go. All right. I'm gonna chance this. Super Ether. That's not the one I want. Crap! Okay, that's not how you get to it either. How the hell do you get to that? You have to land on there. Huh. Alright, let's give myself the charm back. Alright, let's continue searching out. I know there's some way that you have to do this, and I'm not entirely certain as to what it is. This doesn't lead anywhere. 
Alright, okay, we know that if we come back up through here, we just come back around. We can't get down to there without falling. There's nowhere else really that we can go, because there's nowhere that'll fall in here. Oh, okay, wait a second, wait a second, can we... There we go. That's what we have to do. So, those, see those dark spots on the ground? Yeah, if you step on those, you'll fall. So, that one's a bit of a giveaway as to how to get through here. But, just not all the spots that you're going to fall on are going to have, you know. Um, the dark spots. Anyways, do, 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 do. Let's go ahead and, uh, fight ourselves some super hard enemies. Yeah! A monster is inside the treasure chest. A monster? No, that's a lie! There's multiple monsters inside this treasure chest. We have three Tonberries. Which, in all honesty... Oh crap, I don't have it anymore. Wow, I'm dumb. Okay. Um, anyways, what you're gonna want to do to beat these guys is just cast Vanish on everybody. Because you notice, these guys don't use Step Mine. They just use the regular attacks and slowly move forward. Once they get right up to you, they basically gut you like a fish. They cut you open, they eat your insides, eat... It's powerful, alright? Very, very powerful, okay? So just, just don't let it happen. Just vanish yourself and you're pretty much now immune to all their attacks. Right? They'll get right up to you. They will... Wait, shit, did I just... I'm not very smart, am I? No, apparently I'm not. Okay. <sighs> uh... This is just one of those days. I'm just not having a good day. Alright? Okay, give me a break. Anyways, I wanted to cast poison on them so that they die a bit faster, but I totally forgot to counter all magic with holy. Which, as you can see, removes your vanish stats, so you gotta put it right back on. But, all in all, if you have vanish, not a hard fight in the least. They have tons of health, but because they don't cast step mine, they're actually a lot easier than just a normal Tonberry, who can just sit there and decimate your entire party. Alright, so that's one down. There's two down. And, okay, I guess Sabin is gonna kill the third one. Hopefully, my fingers are crossed. They actually drop an item, but it's rare. So, because of that, you need to be careful when you fight them. If you save at the save point just before coming in here, you might want to reload and then just run back in here with the Moogle Charm and just fight them over and over again until you get them to drop it. Because it's a really good item. So, luckily for me, I actually came in and fought them off-screen, so I already have a save file where I've picked it up. So if you'll just excuse me for another minute, I'll be right back after I load it up. Okay guys, so, having reloaded that save, I got the second item, well, THE item that I get from beating the pugs, or the tonberries, or whatever you want to call them. It is one of those great Minerva Bustiers. Alright! Now, there's actually only a few places in the game you can get these. They're only equipable by Terran Celeste, although we've already been over the fact that they're really, really good. 
like, excellent armor to have. Um, you can steal them from the Tawnberries in this fight. Only the ones in this chest, though. You can't steal it from regular Tawnberries. Because you'll notice it's different. When you fight one, it says Tawnberry. Or, sorry, in the American version, it'll say Pug. But when you fight them as the group in this chest, it says Pugs. Like, they actually have different stats, and they're different. They're not the same enemy. Um, so you can steal it from them. They also have a chance of dropping it. Now, you only need the two, because you only need one for Terra and Celeste. And there is actually a th another one you can get. The first one we got was when we Coliseumed up our... our Zarina gown, or whatever it's called. Um, but the last one you can get is from Kefka's Tower, so we won't be getting that one for a while. So best to just hope that you get it here, unless you want to, like, cheat. And there's a way you can get it by kind of cheating. Um, the one from Kefka's Tower, and I'll probably end up showing that, just because. But, you know, it's not something that really needs to be done, and I'd prefer to have it, like, as soon as possible, because now I can actually use both Terra and Celeste at the same time, without one of them being, you know, super frickin' weak. Alright, shadows learn haste and slow, times two. As in the level two abilities of both of those whoops. Well, I was gonna say whoops, but I guess it's not that bad. And by... And by I was going to, I mean, I did. However, this is actually the way I want to go, so it's not really the bad thing. Right? Cool. Alright, continuing on. This time, we're not hitting the switch. Killing more enemies, and proceeding onwards. Oh no, we fell again! But look, we landed in a new area! Alright, that's good. And we fight new enemies just before. Well, as soon as we get into. Aw, oh, you bastard. Healing yourself? You can't do that. I'm supposed to be killing you. Alright, and look, this crazy little area. We got this little totem here. Huh, I wonder what it is. What's this, a sculpture? Well, I already asked, what is it? It's made of bone. There's something in the eye socket. Magirock? <gasps> Yay, we got a Magisite! Look at that! We got Midgar Sormer, or the Midgar Zolum, or whatever you want to call it in whichever game. I think in this game it's called, like, Terra something. It's basically your Earth. Your Earth Elemental Midgar. Or Midgar. Magicite. So, we finally got some Earth Elemental stuff. And hey, look! It's a Sasquatch! Hey, we've been looking for you, buddy! You're, you're gonna fight us? You're a bit of a jerk. I thought you were supposed to join us. I thought. Wasn't Mog saying that he would help us? Oh, I guess he did also say that he's, you know, ill tempered or whatever. Anyways, this guy's not that tough, especially if you're still vanished from the last battle. He can do some pretty hefty damage. And, uh, there's one crazy thing that he does here. You notice he used a yellow cherry on himself? And it ups, like, all his abilities. Well, you can actually make that happen faster by using a yellow cherry on him yourself. And he can do that right at the beginning of the battle, because it'll only happen the once. Only the first time a yellow cherry is used on him will he get all those stat upgrades. How... Ever, you can also just dispel it afterwards. Yeah. Um. Also, from the stat upgrades, he gets power up, defense up, speed up, right? Like, all his stats go up. He gets regen. However, he's got a natural immunity to seizure. And, you know, seizure's like poison, but it doesn't actually, like, have, like, a stat thing. It just, your health slowly goes down over time. Well, by being immune to Seizure, he also becomes immune to the health restoration in Regen, so he won't actually gain any health back, which is kind of weird. I'm your boss, and your break's over, Koopo! You're coming with me and my friends, Koopo! A 
powerful yet gentle Sasquatch who loves to carve bone sculptures with a slightly violent side and the strength to mow down an ironwood tree. His name is Umaro. Yeah! Uh, me, Umaro. You my boss. Break over. You my friend. Nice meet you. Umaro, let's do our best. Goofball! Oh, me wait on big airship you bring. Me saw when looking out door. Big, big ship. And with that, Umaro heads off to our ship. Now, he's a bit of an interesting character, this Umaro. He's always berserked, and his attacks are as if... are like Gao's rage. Like, you have no control over him. He can deal a hefty amount of damage, and for a lot of novice characters, they kind of like him, because you don't really have to control him, and he is fairly good. However, you can't equip him. What he comes with is a bone club and a snow muffler. So he's got some immunities off from the start, but they can't be changed. Um, you can give him relics, so that's all right. There's a few relics that only you can, that only he can equip. All right, I think we've already got one of them. Um, do we? Do we have a rage ring? I think we did. Maybe no. Oh, rage ring. Yes. If you equip this on a yeti, and then there's another one. Um, the rage ring. Basically, what he does is he just uses a physical attack all the time, or like a body slam ability, which is just stronger than his physical attack. If you give him the Rage Ring, he can throw at one of your other party members at the enemy. Kind of if you've played Mario 64, or not Mario 64, sorry, uh, Super Mario RPG, The Legend of the Seven Stars, Bowser has that one glove that allows him to throw Mario. Yeah, it's kind of like that, where it's even more powerful than his uh, dashing ability. And then there's another ring that allows him to use an Ice Elemental ability. I think it's called the Blizzard Ring, I'm not sure. It would make sense, right? But you know they can only be equipped on him because they'll say if you equip this on a Yeti, if you equip it on a Sasquatch, or whatever. Right? It also allows him to absorb and nullify even more elementals. So he can be pretty good. However, he can't learn magic, and he can't even be given magicite. So you can't get stat bonuses for him. So what you get is what you have, and you can't make you can't alter him at all. So for, you know, more experienced players. They don't really like him as much, because, well, you've already seen what I did to Sabbath, so, right? Need I say more? Anyways, uh, that's about it. If you come up here, you can fall. Gives you a little bit of a short cutout, not really a great one, but that's where he was standing earlier, and that's probably how he knows we have an airship. But I think that's about it, you know? Not really much else to do, so... I say we get out of Narsh, we save up, and we end this episode. Alright? Sound good to you guys? Sounds good to me. Until next time, see ya. Thank you.